My name's Steve Donnellan and as Head of Research and Collections here at the Museum, one of our collections that continually draws my attention as a biologist is our collections of fishes, sharks and rays. Numbering some 15,000 lots of specimens, it never fails to intrigue me how these animals have managed to colonise such a wide range of harsh environments. And our collection has some of the most outstanding examples of these strategies. Here we've got a, a mako shark from the Great Australian Bite and you can see the enormously long needle-like teeth. So when a shark like this is actively hunting prey, it's going to be grabbing really energetic, fast-moving fish. And what it's going to be doing is trying to swallow the fish as quickly as possible. And these backward pointing teeth enable that sort of action. So every time the shark moves its jaws, the fish gets forced further back into the jaws and the mouth and the stomach. I bring a bit of engineering. This is an amazing <laughs> bit of engineering too. This is the rostrum or the um, nasal extension of a, um, a tropical ray. This is a fairly small one. Rays do get up to about seven meters in length. This is part of the nose effectively, and all these teeth-like projections are used to damage fish in the shallow water. The uh, ray is then able to suck them up when they're damaged and, and able to swim away. It's a very effective tool for shallow, murky sorts of waters. I think by far my most favorite creature in the fish and shark and ray collection is the cookie cutter shark. We're lucky enough to have a specimen here. Cookie cutters are sharks of the deep ocean. They have a very, very specialized way of finding their food. At night, they come up from a thousand meters depth and find whale sharks, tunas, turtles, sea turtles swimming around on the surface. And they attack them by using this amazing set of teeth. So on the upper jaw, they've got a, a row of fine pin-like teeth. On the lower jaw, they've got these really fearsome chisel-like teeth. And the cookie cutter comes up very stealthily attaches itself to the skin of the whale or dolphin or a turtle, and then using the little pin-like teeth, attaches itself to the skin, and then using the chisel-like teeth, then scrapes out a chunk of meat, much like you would do when you're cookie cutting pastry to make cookies, hence the, hence the common name. They don't go very big. This is a, a, probably a juvenile animal. They get up to about half a meter in length, and they've been known to attack the biggest animals in the ocean. One crazy cookie cutter even took a neoprene chunk out of a nuclear submarine sonar dome. So they're pretty amazing creatures. <laughs> a lot of people have contributed to the fish collection over the past 160 years, including, of course, people from the general public fishers. A lot of fishers have a fantastic knowledge of their local fish fauna. And so when they do see something strange or interesting, they might bring it to the museum. And that's in fact how a lot of our specimens, our unusual specimens have come into the collection. We work with the fisheries department who do research on various aspects of fisheries management. They'll bring material in as well. We have scientists who will go out specifically to target a particular species in a particular place to solve an identification problem. And we also contribute material to other researchers around the planet. So an important thing about museum collections is that it's not just the people in the museum that study them. They're available to the whole planet. And indeed, for any citizen scientist that's interested in, in uh, learning more about the marine environment as well.